Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever time you guys are watching this video, I hope you guys are having a good day as always. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chad, you guys are watching Yager Wrenching, and today is the first day that I'm making a video as a married man. You guys can see the ring on my finger. We are officially married. I gotta marry my best friend, Jill Walker. I am absolutely thrilled. We had a great wedding. There's good footage to come on that. I think if the uh, videographer will let me use some of it, obviously it's up to them, but I did film a little bit of stuff. I filmed cleaning the car. If you guys notice in the background, the Cobra's in really good shape. So today we are talking lower and upper pulleys. I know you guys want to know about them. Everybody's been bugging me about them. I want to be able to explain to you guys what they are. My buddy Eddie actually just talked to a guy on Instagram. Eddie, if you're watching, what's up, dude? Hope you enjoy the videos. And I hope you guys keep watching and, and I'll be able to, you know, help all you guys, educate you guys. And, you know, you can learn from, you know, what I do and everything else. But they had a discussion. They said that I had a 12 pound lower pulley on the car from a CTSV that is incorrect. It is not a 12 pound lower. It is a four pound lower for a CTSV. But let me break this down and let me explain what all that means and everything that goes along with that. So here on my bench guys, you can see we have a six pound lower pulley, a stock lower pulley, and a eight pound lower pulley. Now the difference between all of these is very simple. Size, as you can see, this is the smallest, then that's the next biggest, and then this and that goes with how much boost they make. This makes quote unquote zero pounds because it's stock. Then you could go to a two pound, a four pound, a six pound, a eight pound, and then a 10 pound, and then a 12 pound. So now I'm gonna explain to you kind of in layman's terms how all of this works and why going to a bigger lower pulley is gonna allow you to create more boost, the same as shrinking your upper pulley on your supercharger. In layman's terms, guys, the simplest way to look at it is like gears on a car or anything like that. If you go to a bigger tire, you are gonna have your RPM be lower at a given speed. Our actual driven RPM is gonna drop, but our actual speed of the vehicle is gonna increase. Same thing with this. So our RPM in here can be the same. If it is the same, then it's gonna have a higher output speed on the outside. So when we start spinning this the same speed and it's bigger, it is gonna feed more belt at a faster rate. That's it, super simple. That's why I'm gonna go to a bigger one here. If these two were spinning at the same speed, this wheel would go further than that wheel because it's just bigger. That's just naturally how it works. So that's all there is to it. By doing that, we feed more belt and it's gonna allow us to spin the supercharger faster. And when we boil all of this down, whether you have an upper pulley or a lower pulley, we're trying to spin the supercharger faster because if we spin it faster, it means Theoretically, we should hopefully be able to get more boost up until a certain point because obviously superchargers have a limit of efficiency or an efficiency threshold that we need to stay within. Now, going back to my car, as you guys can see, that is a 12 pound lower. That thing is huge, man. It is 10.55 inches. This six pound lower is 9.1 inches and this eight pound lower is 9.55 inches and a stock lower is 7.5 inches. So as you guys can kind of start to see, as we go up 5.5 inches roughly, we gain about two pounds of boost. Now that works up until you hit about the eight pound mark. And that's where I really started to see a change with my car 
and that's where my car didn't really make that big of a difference in the high RPM and that's because we have one of two issues going on. A, the supercharger is running out of efficiency point blank or B, the opening or outlet of my supercharger isn't big enough to allow that much airflow of or that much volume of airflow. So the only way for me to get around that is A, buy a bigger supercharger or B, port my supercharger. Now, the only way to truly tell whether that is or isn't the case would be to do it, but since we know guys have taken Eaton's and ported them and made more power, obviously it is a size of the outlet that is really the main factor as to why they won't make more power. But there's another thing that can affect it, which is speed. So let's go inside and see if we had a ported supercharger, how fast we could spin it. That would be a 2.76 with a six pound lower. That'd be the ultimate spinning the holy living crap out of your supercharger level, or a pretty good, pretty stout spinning level is doing like a 2.76 upper with a four pound lower. That's pretty common. So let's go inside and check that out. I'm gonna show you guys the combination that I have, how fast, RPM wise, I'm spinning the supercharger and then also how fast all these other combinations are spinning the supercharger. All right guys, I'm gonna show you a quick little setup. You can see here's pulley A, here's pulley B and it says right here, supply any of the following and calculate the fourth. So if we're gonna do it this way, well, you know, here's pulley A, here's pulley B. We'll say that pulley B is our lower pulley because it's bigger just so you know it'll make sense to you guys and then we'll go from there. I have a 10.55 inch lower pulley and I have a 3.6 inch upper pulley. As you can see, that's 6.9, it's 3.60. And then if we go here, we are gonna say that our RPM on the crank is gonna be 6,500 RPM because that's about where we rev the car, so 6,500. And then we're gonna hit calculate and you guys will see we are spinning our supercharger at 19,048 RPM. So that's how fast I'm spinning my supercharger. I think that 19,000 RPM mark is a really good mark to be at and I don't wanna spin it any harder than I am with a non-ported supercharger. But let me show you guys what typical people do that have some of the fastest ported Eaton cars RPM wise on theirs and uh, we'll kinda of get into that. So they do a six pound lower which we know to be a 9.1 and a 2.76 upper we're gonna clear this and get rid of all of this red over here because it's the calculated number. Again, spinning to 6,500 RPM here. We are gonna hit calculate and you're gonna see 21,431 RPM. You guys can see that is quite a bit of RPM. That is 2,400 RPM basically faster than what we are spinning our supercharger or my supercharger. It'll make quite a bit of difference if the supercharger is ported because it can move enough air. now. These blowers, like I said, tend to run out of steam up top. Porting them definitely helps with allowing them to move a little more up top. I think that's the biggest factor affecting me and why my car doesn't make as much boost up top. But these guys with ported blowers can do that and they actually hit even harder down low in the mid range and they'll make even more power and even more torque. But let me show you the RPM of a typical just 2.76 upper with your standard seven and a half inch lower. Again, I've cleared the other 7.5 oh, for the lower pulley, 6,500 RPM is what it's driving and with a 2.76 upper, that gets us to 17,663 RPM on the supercharger. Again, you guys, that's 2,400 RPM slower at 6,500 RPM than I'm spinning mine and that tends to make quite a big difference in power, especially torque. Uh, that goes back to you know why my car makes so much torque is A, it's on 85 and B, we're really spinning the supercharger pretty hard for a non-ported supercharger. I would love to give you guys some data. My car really didn't pick up that much power when I went from an eight pound to a 12 pound in the actual high-end RPM range. We went from making like, I think 478 on pump gas to 508 with a four pound and E85 change. So considering we went to E85, we could stick a little more timing in it and we're sticking more boost down it. It didn't really pick up all that much, which tells you A, the engine is pretty happy with where it was at timing wise. It didn't really need any more timing to make more power. It just, it's kind of at its mid range of, or at its maximum range of making power, which is a 
good thing in my opinion. The more efficient the engine, the less timing it'll need. And also, uh, it just goes to show that the fuel is there just to be a stabilizer, but really, the, it, E doesn't add power. It allows you to manipulate and add more timing. Um, and then from there, that's where the power is generated. So the fact that we didn't pick up any power really means you know, the boost was primarily what did it and timing didn't really care. So I'll show you guys what a stock supercharger spins at just for fun and that way we could see and then you guys can kind of play around with it and like I said, I'll link this below and see what you want. But I think if you're gonna be a non-ported supercharger, I think staying around that 19,000 uh, RPM range is a very, very good range to be at. So a stock upper pulley is 3.6 inches with a stock lower pulley is 7.5 at 6,500 RPM. The supercharger will be spinning a whopping 13,541 revolutions per minute. So that is pretty slow, guys, for a stock car. That's why when guys go, you know, even to a 2.9 and then they get rid of, uh, you know, their stock pulley. It's a 2.9 upper only car. Calculate. That's 16.8. That's almost 17,000. That's not too far away from your 2.76. Some of those guys, I think, even make like a 2.6, I think somebody's made, I believe, don't quote me on that. But if you had a 2.6 upper with a stock lower, you'd be at 18,750. So that's getting almost to that 19,000 RPM range. That's a pretty good combo. But again, guys, when you start getting 2.76 and smaller, this is really where your belt slip's gonna come in and you're gonna be fighting it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I educated some of you guys on this and you learned something. Now you know what my car's doing and what I'm spinning my supercharger to. You can do this with any supercharger. It does not matter. Whether it's a Whipple, VMP, Kenny Bell, doesn't matter guys. This calculator works just the same and you can actually contact the manufacturers of those superchargers and ask them, hey, What's the limit on spinning the supercharger? How fast can I go? And what should I do? And they'll give you a number. You can then take that number, put it in here basically at the RPM that you wanna see in the uh, on one side and, and kind of fill it out or just play with it and work backwards and you know manipulate it till you get what you want combination wise and, and figure out you know what size lower and what size upper gets you that perfect RPM. So uh, yeah, as always, I appreciate you guys for watching. Keep wrenching on your own cars, keep kicking butt. I'll see you in the next one, but it's time for you guys to get the heck out of here.